Hi everyone, welcome back to Box Delights. Today I've got a preview for you of Lost Ruins of Arnak from Czech Games Edition. This is a prototype. This has been sent to me by a friend, Paul Grogan, from Gaming Rules, to give me a chance to have a little play. It's got solar rules in here and demonstrate this game to you. The game plays one to four, and I'm going to demonstrate this solo game for you. There's two sides to this board. We're going to be playing with the bird side. There's also a snake side. This is a worker placement game. It's also a deck building game. So a nice combination of familiar mechanisms. The differences on the boards are different costs for some of the actions and also a different chart on here that allows you to progress towards victory points. Okay, so we're playing on this side. This is a big board, it's going to take up a lot of space. So we'll try our best to fit all this in. Here's the board from top to bottom. We have a separate board, this one's split unfortunately. But Paul, you're not looking after things. <laughs> but it goes on the bottom here, like so. All right, but we're going to, for the sake of my table not being deep enough, we're going to just kind of lay this up alongside, all right? We're going to be leading a party of explorers across this unexplored land. We're going to be competing to reveal the secrets of this island. We're going to be exploring up through the island to reveal its treasures, the most lucrative of which is this bird temple at the top here. And as we explore, we're going to be gaining victory points. We're going to be using our cards and some workers from our player boards to take actions, explore new areas, and research the things that we find to score those victory points. As we progress and explore deeper, we're going to find more resources. We're going to discover items and artifacts that help us build our deck so that we can explore further, gather the resources that we need to explore further to earn those victory points. Right, let's get set up. I'm going to set up for a solo game. The solo game setup is like the two-player game, with a few little modifications. The most important piece during setup is this round marker here. It's called the moon staff. Each round, we're going to move the moon staff up on space, and when it gets to the end of round five, the game ends, and then whoever has the most points wins the game. A round consists of playing all the cards from our hand, playing all our archaeologists, spending as much of our resources as we wish, taking actions. Once we're done, we pass. Once everyone's passed, the round progresses. Okay, so that's the game. I'm going to finish setting up and then we'll play through the game and you'll learn to play as we play. Okay, we're almost done. There's a few little things to reveal. On the main map here are 18 idle tiles. We've randomized these face down during setup, but we're going to turn them face up, except for on this top tier. Up here, there's two idle tiles per space. These are spaces that you can explore. When you explore them, you're going to find these resources or these bonuses. But one tile is going to be face up and one tile is going to be face down on this top tier here. Over on the right is the research track and these are research bonus tiles. As you progress up this track you're going to find these bonuses. Once more these should be face up. Okay? Not all the spots are filled. Some of them like this one's only used in the three player game, this one only in the four player game. Okay? So some are empty. This little stack at the top right here, this remains face down and there's a number of tiles equal to the number of players. In a solo game like I say you set up like a two-player game. We also need to reveal some starting loot, if you like. To the left of the moon staff are artifact cards drawn from this deck. So the first artifact is the Idol of Ara Anu. And then we've got to fill these five spots with items, so less magical items. So we've got a chronometer, a rope, a rough map, an army knife and some bow and arrows. 
we can buy these. At the bottom of each card is a cost. And we'll look at these resources in a little bit and the effect that the card has. But these we can buy and put into our decks. Each player starts with a starting deck of two funding cards, two exploration cards, and two fear cards. Give them a shuffle. And you draw a hand of five cards. So we'll have one left for round two. Well, there's ways to draw cards from your decks, but we'll get into that as we as we play. That's my hand. I've got two archaeologists. I'm choosing to play player green. This is my player board. Okay, this is my deck. This is my hand. Our AI opponent is called the rival. The rival uses the other remaining six workers of the other three colours. Remember, this is all prototypes, so they're not going to look like this in the final game. It's a pretty good prototype, though. The other thing we need to do is set up the rival's deck, its AI deck that controls its actions. You take five, these are the standard AI actions, right? And then you can choose, if you want to play the easy game, you take the five green actions and leave the five red ones back in the box. But if you want to make the game slightly harder, you can start adding red ones and replace the green ones. So we're going to play and we're going to add two red ones in. So we're going to shuffle this up. So that's kind of like the normal or medium difficulty. We're going to grab two red actions. These are going to go back in the box. And we'll find the equivalent green actions. Okay, So this is the one that says take an artifact. This is the one that says overcome a guardian. And we'll add the red ones into our deck and remove the green ones. We'll put the other three green ones in the deck. And we're going to shuffle these all together. So there should be 10 actions. The rival is going to take 10 actions every round. Okay. So it's a lot. Potentially we'll be taking less by the end. By the time we get to round five, we might be taking more than five actions, to, uh, 10 actions. It depends how, how many resources we've got, how big our deck is. Okay. Now we do get some starting resources. Rival is not going to use resources, so we don't have to worry about those. He's just going to take actions, use his workers, take up slots on the board so that we can't do stuff, and it's going to progress through the research track, scoring points. So we've got a target to chase down. We're hopefully aiming for around 65 points, something like that. Progressing up this research track is difficult, but if you get to the top, you can start spending resources to explore this temple. And getting temple artifacts at the top here rewards you with lots of points. So for example, to buy this temple tile worth two victory points is going to cost us one coin and two tablets. To buy this temple tile worth two points is going to cost one jewel, and this temple tile is going to cost one compass and one arrowhead. Those are the five resources in the game, okay? These up here. To buy this six-point temple tile will cost us, look at the, the costs below it. To buy these will cost one coin, two tablets, and a jewel. To buy this one will cost one jewel, a compass, and an arrowhead. And finally, to buy this 11-point temple tile will cost one coin, two tablets, one jewel, one arrowhead, one compass. But there's lots of points to be had. Merely being the first person at the top of this research track, getting your token here gives you 23 points. Second place, 21 points. Right, so there's still a lot of points to be had just to make your way to the top here. But you're not going to do that without the resources. Remember, you'll get resources by placing your workers in these spots over here, these action spots, and by spending cards. Other cards, like this rough map here, gives you, this one says, exile this card, gain three compasses. Okay, but It's going to cost one coin. Your workers will gain the resources. Okay, You'll place them in these action spots, like this one here is a basic action spot. You place your worker here, gives you one arrowhead. So these are campsites, they're called. And as you explore up the map, so to get from this these free actions, if you like, you just place a worker here to these higher ones, You'll need to play three compasses to explore, grab these bonuses, and then more tiles will be revealed that give more resources. Okay, So the game will develop and develop, spots give you more and more resources as you progress. Now you'll notice some of these spots are covered with tokens. In the one and two player games we cover this two boot marker. What that means is each spot can only be filled by one worker. In a three and four player game 
you could have two workers here at each campsite. But in the one and two player games, only one worker per campsite. Okay, in the solo game, to start us off, we start with one coin and one compass, and we place them here at our campsite. There we go. There's a stack of crates pictured here that shows you where to store all your stuff. Right, we'll have a quick peek at our hand and we'll see. Oh, we've got two fear to start us. That's not good. All right. Now we've got cards. We can play these cards and they'll give you resources, but I'll show you that when we hit our turn. For now, it's the rival's turn. All we do is flip over the top card of the action deck, see what it shows. And it says the rival's going to place one of their workers. It's a site that generates tablets. So grab a worker. We look over here, find a site that generates tablets. Now, none of these sites do anything yet, just the basic campsites right at the bottom, by the base camp. And each site generates different types of resources. We've got coins, compasses, tablets, arrowheads, and jewels. This one says you have to discard a card to gain a jewel. Okay, discard a card to gain a jewel. This game is highly icon driven. Let's try and make it as language independent as possible. So they're going to choose, remember their action. Place a worker to gain tablets. Now, Rival doesn't actually gain resources. All they've done is block this spot out, so we can't gain tablets. That's it, they're done. Now it's our turn. Items cost coins. We've got a couple of coins in our hands. Artifacts cost compasses. There's also the research track to think about. At the start of the game, we can either enter the resource track from the left side or the right side. The left side costs one compass, one arrowhead. The right side, one jewel. Once we get on here, we're going to earn rewards shown on the right hand side. We've got two research tokens. We've got a magnifying glass and a book. The magnifying glass will give you the rewards shown in this symbol and the book will show you the rewards shown in this symbol. The book will give you assistance. We'll come to those in a minute. But they're people that you can recruit to join your party and assist you. There's one rule that you must follow though. These two things will go up the tracks independently, but the rule is the book may never be ahead of the magnifying glass. Okay, they could be at the same level. Okay, like so, but the book can never go above the magnifying glass. All right. And as you push up through, so if we paid a ruby, a jewel, and got up here, we would need a tablet and arrowhead to push that up here. Or we could move the magnifying glass up this way or this way, all right? But the book cannot be ahead of the magnifying glass. All right, so we might want to go for a jewel. We might want to go for an arrowhead. Now remember, there's things up here that can gain us compasses and jewels and arrowheads. This one here, the Idol of Araono, looks attractive. This one says research with a discount of one jewel. That could be really good for the research track. I'm interested in this. It costs three compasses to buy. This map gives us three compasses. Now the problem is another distinction between artifacts and items. Items go in your deck. You can't use them straight away, not unless you've got some extra ability to bring them back. Artifacts, however, when you buy them, they fire off their effects straight away and go to your discard pile. So I can't use the map to buy the idol, not yet. But that's why I was disappointed with my card draw because I only got one compass. I have one here, I've got one here. If I'd had a third, this one must be the compass, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna to have to use a worker to go and grab those extra compasses. So I think that's what I'll do. So as my action, they've taken their action, remember? Now we can take an action. So the actions go back and forth, that's all it does until you decide to pass, right? And then when both players have passed, that's the end of the round. But there's other things you can do on your turn. Whenever you see a lightning bolt, that's something you can do without expending your action, okay? So I could use this card. This one says, lightning bolt, do it without expending your action, generate one compass. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play this and gain a compass. So for my action, I'm going to keep those for a minute. I'm going to use my archaeologist, and I'm just going to place it down here at this campsite. This campsite generates two compasses for my worker. Now notice I've only got two workers. That's not a great deal of workers, particularly as this expands and more actions open up. 
So the more I can use my cards, the better. But each round, I can't use my workers more than once. Maybe there's some cards that let you bring workers back, but for the time being, a worker does its job, that's it for the round. Then at the end of the round, we're going to pull our workers back, and then we've got them ready again for round two. But that's it. I've taken my action. My archaeologist is digging out of sight. So back to Rival. Rival is going to place a worker in the compass spot. Ah, but the compass spot is already filled. Okay, you can't place your worker here. You could place it here if we were playing more than one player. All right. So yeah, he's uh, he's stuck. Can't place here. Can't place here. Could place here, here, or here. But as these sites get expanded, more things will become available, more places where you can place your workers. So for now, Rival's doing nothing. Back to me. I happen to know also Rival's going to be taking some items, taking some artifacts, and pushing his way up the research track. At the beginning of the game, it's going to feel like Rival's doing a lot more than we are, but that will change. The tide will turn. I know that one of these cards will say take an artifact, so you might grab that idol. So for my next turn, I'm going to grab it before he does. So I'm going to spend these three compasses. So for my action, I'm going to grab an artifact. That's one of the actions you can take. So we'll pay the three compasses, and we're going to buy this idol. That's his cost. It's going to give us one victory point. So we've got one victory point. We're well on our way to the roughly 65 I think we need. And it says that we can, we'll ignore this tableau at the moment, but this is going to go into our deck. Um, and in future when it comes up, we're going to have to pay, a, we want to use this card, we have to pay a tablet. But the first time we buy it, we ignore the tablet and we just execute its effect. Research with a discount of dual. Okay, this goes in our discard pile. We've played it. We can research, so grab our magnifying glass. We can join the bottom of the track at this point, which costs dual. It's going to cost us nothing. We've got the discount. And we reap the reward at this level, which is one coin. And at this level, at the end of the game, we're going to score one victory point. As it moves up, these numbers go up. Okay, let's take our compass. We could play these if we wanted to at this point, but I think we're going to hold on to them for the minute. We've got a space here now where that artifact was. We refill it straight away. We've got Guardian's Ocarina. Return a placed worker to your board. Oh, that's really good. He might grab that. We've got no way of grabbing four compasses. That's a really good card. What's he going to do? Yeah, here we go. This one said, I oh know this is item. If you see the trowel, that means item. This one says it's going to grab the item that rewards him with the fewest number of victory points. This one gives two, one, 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 two. So he's going to grab one of these three items. Which one does he grab? We need a tiebreaker. Now we look at the top of this card. It's got an arrow pointing to the right. This one says we take the rightmost that breaks that tie. Okay, so that one gives two, that one gives two. Remember, it's lowest. So it's one of these three. The rightmost one is this one. He's going to grab the army knife. He's not going to use it. It doesn't have a deck of cards, but what he's doing is grabbing the one victory point. Okay, all right. Rival's off and running, and we've really filled the gap. Before we refill, everything shuffles towards the moon staff. Okay, we fill. A machete. Okay, so some good items. I've got four gold potentially. I could buy that machete. Interesting. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my second worker. Normally, you might want to send your worker up to explore some of these areas. To explore at this level, though, costs three compasses. I've only got one, and I don't see another way of generating more compasses. One thing I could do is start researching with my book, get an assistant. I've got one compass, I don't have a blue arrow, so I could send them my second worker here. Yeah, why don't I do that? So, I'll send my book, do you know what I forgot to do? On this campsite, there's a boot icon. That's a resource, okay? You have to walk there. It's gonna cost you a boot. I should have done the same here, but we can deal with that. Because here in my hand, I've got these fear cards. Up in the top left is a travel cost. Some of these locations cost different things. For example, if I want to travel here, it costs a boat. If I travel here, it costs a jeep, right? So you can use cards either for their regular effect or just discard them for their 
travel resources. So I'm going to discard the fear card, this one fear for its boot. Okay, and of course I should have done the same when I traveled here for the compasses, when I camped here for the compasses. All right, cool. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going here and I'm claiming a blue arrow head. Place there my resources. Um, I could spend these, but I'm going to keep them for the minute. At the end of the round, you're going to draw back up to five cards. So if you've got unspent cards, you can either leave them in your hand, in which case if I left these two, I'd only draw three, or you can discard them and then draw up to five. But it generally it's good just to use every card that you can, because you can stockpile your resources here. All right, let's see what he does. Okay, this one says he's going to research, grab an assistant if he can. This bit down here says, ignore this in round five. That's why it's a little bit easier. It's green on the red card. This is missing. Okay. And then the rival only has the magnifying glass token. So he's going to join. Whether he goes left or right, again, we look at the top icon here. So he's got a choice. He can go up this path or this path. He's going up this path. Um, so he's researched. Maybe he doesn't collect the resources. But he will grab the assistant. Assistants are up here. There's three stacks, three stacks of four assistants. We're keen on grabbing some of these ourselves, but he's going to grab one first. He'll grab from the top stack, but at the moment it's set up, there's four in each. So again, he's just going to look at the tiebreaker and grab from the leftmost, which is a shame because that's the one I was kind of interested in. Never mind, that's out of the game now. And it's back to us. So I might just spend these two cards and grab two coins. Remember, they're free actions. They've got the lightning bolt, and we can decide what to do. I'm going to research. I've got a coin, uh, sorry, a compass and an arrowhead. So I'll spend those. And that puts me up this track. Remember the cost, compass, arrowhead. All right. And I can gain an assistant now. The book grabs the square reward and assistant. Oh, this is a bit of a tough decision because I like this one that gives me tablets. This assistant will give me a tablet for free every round. This one will give me an arrowhead. I'll have to pay one coin for it. But I kind of want my coins because I want to buy that machete. Yeah, I want the machete, I think. So I'm going to take this guy. You've got room for two assistants. And they go on your player board. There's one here, one here. And they have a free action to generate that resource. This bit down below says if you upgrade your assistant, his power becomes stronger against a gold and a tablet. To upgrade your assistant, you need to reach one of these research spots here, which is a gold colored icon. As it goes, we're going to use it straight away because it's got the free action effect. Tilt it sideways and generate a tablet. Well, that is my action complete. I'll hand over to Rival at this point. Okay, they're going to place a worker on the ruby space. So this one will go, go, go. <laughs> I don't know why that's already there. I was, I was demonstrating earlier, wasn't I? Right, so this one will go here. Remember, rival doesn't get resources, doesn't need to discard anything. And then it's back to us. And I'm going to spend my four. I've got a tablet so I can get up hit this way. So I spend my four coins to buy an item. Now the good thing is we're approaching the end of the round now. So items I get will go in my deck and I'm going to draw them next time. I know that they'll definitely come out next time. So I want the machete. That costs four. I mean this one's good as well, but maybe it's a little bit too early. But I think machete's going to help me. This icon here says exile a card. We need to thin our deck. We need to get rid of those fear cards. Fear cards are going to hit me for minus one, you know, that minus one victory point at the end of the game if I've still got them on my deck. In fact, before we, before we, we're close to the end of the round. So before we wrap up, this is final scoring. So your research tokens will score you points. Temple tiles are going to score you points. Idols that you collect. So as we explore, these are worth three points each. So we do really want to explore. It's a good way, not just research. But exploring is a good way to get points. But also, when you explore, guardians are going to be revealed. These are horrible monsters that protect these sites. If we can defeat them, they're five points each. So we might get 
you know, five or six of those, that's 25, 30 points. Points from artifacts and items, fib minus one. So we do want to get rid of those. And yeah, Machete's only giving us one, bow and arrows would have been two. So Machete, we take this and it goes on the bottom of our deck. Okay. We refill. And we've got an aeroplane. There's nothing my eye can do, so I'm just gonna pass next time, but let's see what I did do that right, didn't I? Yeah, I must have just placed that worker there by mistake. Okay, so a worker for a blue arrow, that's filled. He's then going to defeat a guardian. If there aren't any, he's going to research. So his research spot goes up again. Then he'll place for coins. Then he'll take the artifact with the highest point value. I mean, I, I can place these things, but I know they're not doing anything now. So he's going to take this artifact, Guardian's Ocarina. This is a beauty, and it's worth two victory points. But yeah, I'm sad to see that one go. Refill. Got a war club. Nice. And then finally, right, this one's interesting. Finally, he's going to explore and reveal a Guardian. So he wants to place a one tier monster. This says the action in round one, the action in round two, three, four, and five. So different things at different times, okay? So in round five, you'll do nothing. In round two, you'll explore but a new site, but won't reveal a guardian. And they work their way from the bottom up here. But where will they discover? They're all vacant. So again, we'll just use the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker is the arrow um, of the top one, but there isn't one, so you just flip back to the bottom, and it was rightmost. Okay, so rightmost. He's going to discover this site here. So to discover, he takes the idol, draws a new level one site, places it here. We'll turn it over, and we found this ruby temple. Now, what this means is this now becomes a site that we can dig at just like these campsites so we can place our workers here it's going to cost us a boat to travel here not a boot okay so a boat to travel here and we'll get a ruby so that's a nice site but remember he also has to place a guardian we draw the top guardian from the stack it's five victory points if you can defeat it or overcome this guardian and we reveal it So one of his workers is now at this site, doing the discovering. Typically they would claim the resource straight away, and then if they end the round at a site with a guardian, they gain a fear. But remember, rival doesn't get resources, it doesn't gain cards. Defeating this guardian is going to cost one boot, one tablet, one arrowhead, and it has a bonus effect that says you can exile a card as a free action. There's a lightning bolt here. Spiky lizard. Okay, we're almost done. So what about this idol? The idol is going to go onto the rival's player board. We would collect these if we discovered here, but it's going to go onto the rival's player board. And you'll notice the rival has a special board. It looks different to ours. It's just the same as ours, but on the back side is a grey tent. On the front side is either a red, yellow, green or blue set of tents. The grey tents is the rival side. And what you do is you find the idol that matches this icon, the exile card, and you place it here. That's going to be worth three points at the end of the game. If they collect another one with the same icon, it will go into this pile here with the minus one on. That means instead of costing, th uh, giving them three victory points, it'll only be two victory points, all right? Three minus one. Okay, so collecting the same idols for rival just gives them a, a one less point. All right, that's the end. So we're gonna shuffle this back up for next round. But for now, we're moving into end of round. That's everyone's passed. So we all get our workers back. Any workers that are leaving a site with the Guardian would add a fear to their player board. We shuffle all our cards that we've played. 
just to give them a shuffle, and they'll go back on the bottom of our deck. So we might pull that artifact if we're lucky. We refresh our assistants so they can do stuff again next time. We'll draw five cards, one, two, three, four, five, into our hand. We'll look at those next time. And then finally, we have to advance the round marker, the moon star. Before we do that, we exile the cards either side of the moon star. So this artifact goes, this item goes, we move the moon star up to round two, and then we refill everything to the left. The moon star is an artifact, everything to the right is an item. So you can see as the game progresses, this is also neat, you get fewer of these basic items, but more of these magical artifacts. Got a monkey medallion. And ceremonial rattle. This one says gain an item, place it on top of your deck. This one says refresh one of your assistants. So you can make them act twice in a round. Finally, we're going to reshuffle this and we're ready for round two. So join me next time as the adventure amongst the lost ruins of Arnak continues. <laughs>